Hey guys, so welcome back. Today we will review subtracting decimals. Now subtracting decimals is very similar to adding decimals because you still need to line up your numbers and your decimal point. For an example, if we have 14.52 minus 2.40. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up my decimal points and my numbers so that I can subtract. All of my numbers are lined up. My decimal point is also lined up. And if you want, you can put your imaginary zero here, but you do not have to. Two minus zero is two. Five minus four is one. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my decimal. Four minus two is two. And then one minus zero is going to be one. So your final answer is 12.12. .12. Let's try 67.85 minus 25.15. Let's go ahead and line up our decimals and our numbers. Minus 25, adding my decimal, lining it up right under each other, and 15 here. Five minus five is zero. 8 minus 1 is 7. Bring that decimal down. 7 minus 5 is 2. And then you have 6 minus 2. That's going to give you 4. So your final answer is 42.70. So let's try 7.21 minus 4.01. Let's go ahead and line up our numbers. So 7.21 minus 4.01. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 0 is going to be 2. Bring your decimal down. And then you have 7 minus 4. That's going to give you 3. So your final answer is 3.20. So let's try 100 minus 6.781. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my subtraction problem and line up my decimal and my numbers. So 100 minus my 6.781 is going to be here. Before I subtract, I'm going to go ahead and add my decimal here and fill in the blank spaces with zeros. You can add a zero here, add another zero here as well. Oh, these zeros look, <laughs> okay. Yes, they're imaginary, all right. So zero minus one, can't do that. I'm going to borrow, can't do that. I'm still going to borrow. I'm gonna go down here, can't do that. I'm gonna borrow right here in the ones place, can't do that, still zero. This is zero, so I have to go all the way down to the hundreds place to borrow. So this one is going to become a zero. And this zero here in the tens place is going to become a 10. But when I look at my problem and I take a step back, I am still stuck right here in the ones place. So this 10 is now going to become a nine. This zero here is now going to become a 10. All right, I'm still not able to subtract because I have zeros all over here. So I'm going to borrow again in the ones place. This is gonna become a nine. This zero here will now become a 10. But when I take a step back, I am still stuck here and here. So this 10 is now going to become a nine. This zero here will now become a 10. But I need to borrow one more time. So this 10 is going to become a nine. And this zero here is going to become a 10. Now I can subtract. I have nine, 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 and 10. Okay, so now I'm going to subtract. 10 minus one is going to give me nine. Nine minus eight is going to give me one. Nine minus seven is two. Bring that decimal down. Nine minus six is three. 
nine minus zero is going to be nine, and then zero minus zero, that's zero. So your final answer is 93.219, okay? Now remember guys, when you are subtracting decimals, make sure you subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So we can see that 100 is greater than six. If you were to rewrite this problem as 6.781 minus 100, and you added your zeros after, you will get the same thing, except you will get a negative 93.219. It only makes sense mathematically. If I have six minus four, that's going to give me a two, right? But if I then subtract four minus six, it's the same thing, except this time I will have a negative two. So let's look at 99.09 minus, let's do 98.39. Let's go ahead and line up our numbers and our decimal. 99.09 minus 98.39. 9 minus 9 is 0. 0 minus 3. Oh, I need to borrow. I'm going to borrow here in the 1's place. This 9 is going to become an 8. This 0 here in the 10's place is going to become a 10. So now I can subtract. 10 minus 3 is going to be 7. Bring that decimal down. 8 minus 8 is 0. And then you also have 9 minus 9 is 0. So your final answer is going to be 0 0.70. Let's try 14,329.81 minus 2.6382. So first thing first, let's line up our numbers and our decimal. 0.81. Minus 2.6382. So let's go ahead and fill in the holes with some imaginary zeros. So let's put imaginary zero here. Here, we can put in some our imaginary zeros here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and subtract. So I first have 0 minus 2. I can't do that. I'm going to borrow here. This is still 0. I'm going to borrow here from this 1. This 1 is going to become a 0. This 0 here is going to become a 10. But I am still stuck right here. So now I'm going back and borrowing from this 10. This 10 is going to become a 9. This zero here is now going to become a 10. Now I can subtract. So 10 minus two is eight. Nine minus eight is one. Zero minus three, uh-oh, I am stuck right here. I have zero and I'm trying to subtract three. Can't do that, I'm gonna borrow. So I'm gonna borrow from this eight. It's now going to become a seven. This zero will now become a 10. So now I can subtract. 10 minus 3 is going to give me 7. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring that decimal down. 9 minus 2 is 7. 2 minus 0 is 2. 3 minus 0 is 3. 4 minus 0 is 4. And then 1 minus 0 is going to be 1. So your final answer is 14,327.1718. So let's try 12 minus 8.99. Let's go ahead and line up our numbers. 12 on top and then my 8.99 here at the bottom. I'm going to add my decimal point decimal point here after the 12 and some imaginary zeros to fill in the gap. 
And remember, you can add your imaginary zero there if you want to. So now I'm going to subtract zero minus nine. Can't do that. I need to borrow. Still have zero. I have to borrow here from the two. So this two is going to become a one. This zero here in the tenths place is going to become a ten. So I am still stuck right here in the hundredth place. So this 10 is now going to become a 9 because I'm going to go back to the 10th place to borrow. And this 0 here will now become a 10. So now I can subtract. So we have 10 minus 9 is 1. 9 minus 9 is 0. Add that decimal, bring it down. And here you have 11 minus 8, and that's going to give you 3. So your final answer is 3.01. And remember, if you saw this subtraction problem as 8.99 minus 12, remember you are going to get the same answer except it's going to be a negative 3.01. Let's try 18 minus 7.55. So let's line up our numbers, 18 on top, 7.55, the bottom. I'm going to add my decimal and fill in the holes here. Fill that in with imaginary zeros. Now I'm going to subtract. So zero minus five, can't do that. I'm going to borrow in the tenths place. Can't do that, it's still zero. So I'm going down here in the ones place. This eight is going to become a seven. This zero here is going to become a 10. But when I analyze my problem, I am still stuck right here. So I'm going back to the tenth place. This 10 is going to become a nine. This zero here will now become a 10. So now I can subtract. So you have 10 minus five, that's five. Nine minus five is four. Bring that decimal down. And then you have seven minus seven is going to be zero. And then you have one minus zero, that's one. So your final answer is 10.45. And another way to understand these decimal problems is to understand if you had $18 and you bought something that costs $7.55, then you will have $10.45 left. Let's try this example here, 31.84 minus 2.430. Let's go ahead and line up our numbers and our decimal point. So 2.430. And I'm going to fill in this little hole here with imaginary zero. And then you can add it here too if you want. So now I can subtract. I have zero minus zero is going to be zero. Four minus three is one. Eight minus four is going to be four. Bring that decimal down. And then you have 31 minus two is going to be 29. So your final answer is 29.410. 21.410. Minus 8.79. So 21.36, I'm going to line up my numbers and decimal. Minus 8.79. So first, we're going to subtract 6 minus 9. Can't do that. I'm going to borrow here in the tenths place. This 3 is going to become a 2. This six here in the hundredth place is going to become a 16. So now you have 16 minus nine, that's going to give you seven. And then you have two minus seven, can't do that. Now I have to borrow. I'm gonna borrow here in the ones place. This one is going to become a zero. This two in the tenths place is now going to become a 12. So you have 12 minus seven, that's going to give you five. Bring your decimal down and then you have zero minus eight can't do that i'm going to borrow here in the tens place this two is going to become a one this zero here in the ones place is going to become a ten so now you have ten minus eight is going to be two 
and then 1 minus 0 is going to be 1. So your final answer is 12.57. Let's try 64.78 minus 8.2. Let's set up our problem, 64.78 minus 8.2. All right, decimal points are lined up. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the gaps with some zeros. So 8 minus 0 is going to be 8. 7 minus 2 is 5. Bring that decimal down. And here you have 64 minus 8. And that's going to give you 56. But let's go ahead and break it down so that you guys can see. Okay. So I cannot subtract 4 minus 8. I'm going here in the tens place. This 6 is going to become a 5. This 4 here in the ones place will now become a 14. So 14 minus 8 is going to be 6, and then 5 minus 0 is going to be 5. So your final answer is 56.58. So let's try 9.035 minus 0.095. Let's go ahead and line up our numbers and our decimal point minus 0 0.095. So 5 minus 5 is 0. 3 minus 9 can't do that. I'm going to borrow here in the tens place. Oh, when I come here, I still have 0. So I'm going down to the ones place. This 9 is going to become an 8. This 0 is going to become a 10. But when I take a step back and I analyze my problem, I am still stuck right here in the hundredth place. So this 10 is going to become a 9, and this 3 here is going to become a 13. So now we have 13 minus 9, and that's going to give us 4. 9 minus 0 is 9. Decimal, bring that decimal down. And then you have 8 minus 0, that's going to give you 8. So your final answer is going to be 8.940. All right, so let's try this. 8.03 minus 4.28. Let's line it up. Line up your decimal and your numbers. 4.28. So remember, I'm taking the smaller number from the larger number. Okay, your 4 is smaller than the 8. Okay, so. 3 minus 8, can't do that. I'm going to borrow in the 10th place, but when I go to my 10th place, I still have 0. So I'm going down to the 1's place. This 8 is going to become a 7. This 0 here is going to become a 10. But I am still stuck here in the 100's place, right here. So now this 10, I'm going back to borrow, is going to become a 9. This 3 here will now become a 13. So we have 13 minus 8 is going to give me 5. 9 minus 2 is going to be 7. And then you have 7 minus 4. That's going to give you 3. So your final answer is going to be 3.75. Right, so let's try 8.16 minus 5.27. So 8.16 minus 5.27. I'm going to start with 6 minus 7. Can't do that. I'm going down to the tenths place. This 1 is going to become a 0. This 6 here is going to become a 16. So now you have 16 minus 7. That's 9. 0 minus 2. Can't do that. I'm going to borrow from the 1's place. This 8 is going to become a 7. This 0 here in the tenths place is going to become a 10. So now you have 10 minus 2 is 8. Bring that decimal down. And then 7 minus 5 is going to be 2. So your final answer is 2.89. So that is all we have for today. Remember when you are subtracting decimals to line up your decimal point and your numbers. All right? 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.